It's the Bad Belly. It's a late night edition. I don't even know if I can do this. I told myself I tried to do this this afternoon. I've been trying to do this all evening. I just... I have really serious anxiety even just trying to start this. And I know that if I turn the camera off, I won't turn it back on. Tom tomorrow's the day I go back in to see my gastroenterologist. I am not so much worried about what he's going to say because I, I know the blood panels and the test results. I, I'm, I don't really know what the ultrasound, but I know um, a bunch of the test results that he was sent. And I know how I feel now that I've started the FODMAP diet. Um, how much I've managed to get a lot of my symptoms under control. So it's not really that part or at least I'm not focusing on that part of it. And that, I mean, that was the case like last year, for example, when I knew I was going in to find out the level of damage to my pancreas or, you know, which parts were missing type thing. I wasn't really sure what I was walking into, but I knew I had had a lot of uh, scans that he could look at. Um, So it's not really what he's going to say so much as it is um, my fear of how I'm going to feel going into the city and when I get to the city. Because the reality is that with a very few um, super fun exceptions, I don't go in very often it's not it's not something that I do and if I am going into the city I'll go in like because we're going like um, Sean and I were just talking about how we went to see Kathleen Madigan and how awesome that was and we saw her at Massey Hall um so that was you know that was terrific but we didn't take public transit and um we didn't we didn't go to a hospital so all I had to really deal with was the parts of the city that I was familiar with or that reminded me of, of being in the hospital. And like, even now I'm seeing what, um, the hospital I was in for five months looks like in the summertime. And I'm like right there on the street right now. So the only time that I go in is if I'm going in usually, um, for a reason. So I'm going in to see one of my specialists or I'm going in for diagnostic testing or um, there have been a couple of times that I just went, um, I guess for like closure reasons, I, I, I felt like I had to go back and there were um, specific people that I wanted to talk to and that I wanted to thank and uh, I am planning on going back there tomorrow. There's one nurse left in particular that uh, I never, I never, she hasn't seen me since I was wheeled out of there like two years ago now. She was there on my last morning, though, and, um... Her name's Eileen, and she's someone that was... extremely important to me, um, after I came out of the step-down unit. Uh, and I was moved on to the regular ward. Eileen, she wasn't my first nurse. This was on a, um, a holiday long weekend and she wasn't my first nurse. 
but she was on with me that whole weekend and um she really took an, an interest in my case and um She was instrumental in getting me out of there up until that point. Um, the primary focus of pretty much everybody had just been keeping me alive. And so once I made it onto the regular ward, the focus shifted. And Eileen was the first of the nurses who really started the process of deinstitutionalizing me and I know that that sounds maybe strange because I at that point I had only been in the hospital I can't think from the end of June until Labor Day so that's July August first week of September last week and a half of June whatever that adds up to um But it was little things, uh, fuck. Eileen washed my hair. And it was the first time uh, that had been done since I came in. There had been, uh, there was an attempt made to, to wash my hair and it was a, a funny and odd and wonderful day that I will never forget. Um, but the first time somebody from the hospital tried to wash my hair, um, it was Eileen. Hair is a super big deal and I am going to do a post on hair because obviously, um, it's something that's emotional for me. Um, if you know me, you will know exactly why. If you're watching this and you don't know me, or you only know me with this, what's under here, hair. Um, when I went into the hospital, I had hair down in my hips. I was very close to being able to sit on it. And it was very thick. And I was very vain about it. Uh, I did crazy stuff with my hair. Uh, you've, if you've seen some of my before and after pictures, you might have noticed, like, when my first son was born, I had flaming red, flaming red hair. And um, for my second little guy, my hair was purple, purple, teal, and blue. So I really like to play with it, even though it was so long. Um, so my hair was a really big deal to me. Um, and I don't have this haircut by choice. Uh, again, I will be addressing this. Um, but a lot of my hair uh, fell out. Most of my hair fell out. Um, yeah, so we'll... Hair's a whole thing. But I'm going back to the hospital, so anything right now will set me off completely. But Eileen is a doll, and I am really hoping that when I go in tomorrow that I will see her. I am hoping to see Dovina, who was with me on several uh, key things. Um... Dovina was with me one night when they had tried to move me from the ICU to a bed out of the ICU. That trip out of the ICU uh, did not last for very many hours. And Dovina was there that night. Um, incidentally, she was also there that first day in the ward when... Uh, when Eileen washed my hair, which I couldn't, I say that, and um, what you probably don't know is that at this point at Labor Day, I could not sit up, like, like I couldn't sit, like I'm, I'm sitting now to sit for this long, it's been almost 10 minutes, and to sit for this long, that was like m my absolute max, and it took 
a team of people to get me into that position uh, in a chair outside of my bed. Um, so Eileen actually washed my hair while I was lying flat in a bed because um, I couldn't walk to get to a, a shower or anything either. That didn't happen until end of September, first week of October maybe. So, um, yeah, tomorrow I go to the city. And I know, because I've done it before, so I know what some of my triggers are. Um, like the whole sideways thing that I've talked about before, I've, I, I know that's going to happen. Um, or at least I, I'm prepared for that to happen. <laughs> And I was okay with it last time. It happened last year. And um, basically what ended up happening was I just, we came up and out to in front of the hospital. And as soon as I, and it was hot. And then, um, as soon as I smelled the city, everything went sideways in my brain. And uh, the whole gurney thing. And I just... Um, I, I just kind of froze and I just stood there. Um, it didn't take long before I had the presence of mind to move off of the sidewalk. And I just stood like in the lee of a building and took a break. Just wrote it out. My mother-in-law was with me for that trip. Um, and that really helped having her there with me, um, in part because obviously I had to explain what was happening or I felt like I did, uh, cause that's, that's really fucking weird to be standing there with somebody who is, you know, paralyzed with what is probably this look or close to it. <laughs> yeah. Close to it on their face. Um, it's really just terrifying to go back there and uh, I'm simultaneously excited to be going because I, I genuinely really like my gastroenterologist a lot. Uh, not least of which because he single-handedly saved my life like three times. So I like seeing him. Um, I like seeing him because usually he likes seeing me. Um, he's happy that I'm doing well and that I'm alive and he, um, he asks about the boys and he, uh, he knows Sean. Um, he would call Sean, uh, after and, and stuff with my procedures and just if there were questions or, um, there were things that went wrong, not because of what he did, but just other things that that were going wrong with me. And so he would be called in and um, he would call Sean and levy an opinion or, or whatever it required. I, this is, I'm not, I know that at some point Sean was in my room and he left my room because he called and he talked to him and he would come back in and say, okay, I just talked to the gastro guy. Like, I was so out of it for all of this time. Like, I, I just, when you're that sick, I, I don't know, maybe I, I, I'm sure it's different for everybody. For me, when I was that sick, I wasn't able to process what was happening to me. And I was so unable to process what was happening me, to me that I think I don't know if this is true or not, but I, I feel like people just 
there was like no point in even trying to explain it to me at all. Like, no point. If, to what end? Like, I, I just I just had to keep keep fighting. I just had to keep going. There there was no point in engaging in the medical process really or speculation about it because I, I, I was just completely swept up in the tide of what was happening. Like you just, they're just, phew. um, but yeah, so it's, um, <laughs> it's always good to see him. And it was always good to see him before. It's not that I disliked him when he did those things that saved my life that I'm really not supposed to remember. And I mean that because I was being um, pumped full and I think my camera's shaking now, sorry. Um, during the procedures I was, I had an anesthesiologist literally right in my like right in my face she and I were so close because I was strapped sideways to a wall right so she was on a stool right beside my head and she would stroke my head and stroke my face and I couldn't talk of course because I had that massive thing in my mouth and all those tubes and cameras and everything um but she um the anesthesia she was an anesthesiologist she had blonde hair and she was really nice um but obviously like there was a toughness to her like you could just anyway um she was pumping me full of um painkillers mostly um fentanyl and propofol those I think were were those were the big, two big ones. There was, there was um, a fair bit of other stuff involved as well. And then the whole twilight phenomenon was supposed to happen, right? But it didn't, um, it didn't entirely take. And this is a much longer conversation. And we've already been going now for like 18 minutes. What I'm doing in my brain right now is I am weighing out whether I think it is helpful or harmful for me to relive those procedures before I go in to see him tomorrow. And you know what? I'm pretty much going to go with no. We are absolutely going to come back to it. I understand that it is a key piece to anyone else understanding all of this um but it's not like I actually I actually have to live this tomorrow so I just have to like <sighs> it seems so fucking corny but I just I really do like right now my the middle of my chest is like really heavy and really hot and I just have to center and just it's gonna be okay I always get through these things and I and I know that I know that I can do this I know that I am going to do this and at the end of the day I'll be completely fine but I still have to do it I still have to do it so okay this is my longest video by far um, it's gonna be a good day tomorrow it's, it's gonna be a good day thank you so much for coming along with me uh, I'm gonna be back to let you know how it goes that's kind of the whole the whole point of all of this. Anyway, thank you. Good night.